Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome back in from a little break. Uh, my name's Greta. I am the director of product marketing at Vercel, uh, and I have the absolute privilege of speaking with Jonathan Lemon, who, uh, together with his team at Sonos, has uh, not only migrated from uh, Salesforce Commerce Cloud Managed Service to Next.js and Vercel, but continues to use and innovate with Next.js uh, for their global site. So thank you so much. Yeah, for thanks me. for having me. Pleasure to be here. Um, OK, so the topic for today was kind of mainly about um, developer experience. Sure. Uh, so I want to start kind of by uh, trying to define that. <laughs> You've sure. been a developer for quite some time, and you now manage a team of, of a large amount of developers. Um, talk to us about what DX means to you and how you measure that. Absolutely. I mean, for us, developer experience is about keeping people happy. So it's really providing you know, the best tools, um, the most up-to-date tooling as well. Um, I'm all about not bleeding edge, but current tech. You know, for us, that's, that's with Next.js. We're running on Vercel. Um, we're now using Sanity as our CMS, so they've been a great partner too. So um, yeah, I think um, it's just what the developers want to use, so it's what we've got for them. Yeah, Sanity, great partner out yeah. here in the first floor over yeah, here. Yeah. Um, what are some of the characteristics that you look for, I guess, in kind of uh, in what a good DX sure. could mean? Yeah, I was thinking about this recently. I mean, getting set up is a huge thing for developers, right? I mean, if I, I look back to when I was a Java developer in my <laughs> early days, and the getting set up with, I think it was what Web WebSphere, and it <laughs> took it took days, weeks to get on board. It took forever. So, you know, now for us, you know, we're on GitHub. I say we're using Next, so it's basically clone the repo, install your dependencies, hit run, you're good to go. And then with, with hooking and with for sale, of course, you know, you're deploying that out uh, with your previews and developers can quickly and easily test their code. So it's a much better experience. Yeah, productivity, removing, Absolutely. Uh, removing dependencies and all yeah. that jazz. Um, how do you listen to your team? Like, what role does the, does the team play in kind of providing sure. feedback to, to you? I mean, we'd be crazy if we didn't listen to our developers. Yeah. So, I mean, the reason we're on Vercel is because our, our developers weren't happy, right? So, you know, for, if you didn't know, we're, we were on Amplify before, right, which, which hosted our Next.js solution. And it did the job, but it, it definitely provided some roadblocks. There was no preview builds. Or you could have them, but they were very slow. So preview builds were a big thing. Um, so we listened, and they said, you know, we need a better solution. So uh, we looked into, you know, the home of Next.js and Vercel, and here we are. So um, I feel like we listen to them all the time. They give us suggestions, and I feel like it's designed by committee. Mm, so yeah. listening to them and taking their input. So it's not just top of the ivory tower talking down. It's listening <laughs> to them and, and giving them yeah. their, their, their voice. Yeah, and you guys were uh, originally on kind of a fully managed mm -hmm. uh, instance of Salesforce Commerce Cloud. You're yep. now yep. Um, migrated to Next.js and headless Salesforce. That's correct. Yeah. Um, talk to us about what wasn't working with the fully managed piece of that, and and what the DX was like. Absolutely, for that. and you know Salesforce Commerce Cloud have been a great partner of ours, but uh, the big problem was you know you were kind of restricted to their platform for for building a UI, right? So. Yeah. Um, Ultimately, what happened was our business wanted a new design, a new brand image to, to match our product, right? So uh, Salesforce just couldn't do that. We couldn't have the libraries. Um, another thing was that we couldn't get developers on Salesforce, right? Mm. So it's a very bespoke thing. You know, we look at Next.js and TypeScript, React. Everybody's using it now, so it's easy to get those developers. So, so ultimately, the decision was um, to go with, with and basically, we landed on Next. You know, we'd looked at Gatsby. So we landed on Next, and uh, we started building it out. Um, so not only did we take the front end off, we basically took the CMS element out of there. And so we moved that into Sanity, and we moved our back end infrastructure into serverless and AWS. Um, so brand new stack, mm. still using Salesforce in, in the headless approach, like you mentioned. So a completely different uh, landscape than we were a few years ago. What was it about Next.js? Like, what were some of the features that made it a right fit for Sonos? I, I mean, I say ISR. I think everyone knows. For e-commerce, yeah. it was a perfect fit, right? So uh, we're pre-building, you know, I think around 600 pages at mm. build. So whenever we push new changes, you know, that those pages are live, real time for our users. Um, you know, we use the, you know, incre it's incremental. Every two hours, we rebuild those pages to pull up content. That allows our content teams to make changes. Um, and then we can also do, you know, on-demand kind of stuff as well. So that along with, you know, statically, sta statically generating pages, you know, um, server-side rendering. So it was really a great fit for the e-commerce experience. You're able to kind of balance the, the build times, the developer experience Absolutely. with the user experience of Agreed, personalization yeah, and all that. Um, it sounds like it was also kind of a change for your internal teams. What yes. was that like? What were those conversations like to manage? 
manage that? I think a big part, a big problem that we did was we didn't really think about the tooling to go with it, right? So I think our content team, and if they're listening, they'll, they'll agree <laughs> that they lost some tooling, you know, in terms of what they could do. So we, we've now started building those tools, and but it's, you know, we're two years live now with Next, so mm -hmm. it's taken a while to build those those tools, um, things like scheduled content, you know, for our promotions yeah. and things like that. So uh, I think if we were to do it again, we would definitely take look at that as well as just the actual site uh, revamp. Yeah, and so obviously uh, moving off of um, fully managed Salesforce, it was also uh, an infrastructure change. Absolutely. Um, what were some of like the lessons learned or what were you looking for in that move of like what is the the host for you. Yeah, so when we moved to Next, that was easy. We knew we wanted yeah. to build a Next.js, but the problem was, well, like, where do we host it? Um, and really, I think it came down to, you know, we tried to build our own on AWS. I think we actually tried to mimic actually what <laughs> Vercel were doing at the time, because mm -hmm. I think it was publicly available, but we couldn't make it work. Um, we landed on Amplify because we were in AWS. We're a, they're a big partner of ours, like everybody has, and um, it worked. Um, but really, it was a little cumbersome over, mm. the, over the year we were with them. And we had to do a lot of custom things. ISR didn't work, for example. So we had to put in a, a kind of custom hack mm. to make it work. And, and we just spent a lot of time maintaining that stack. So infrastructure was a big problem from the get-go. Obviously, you know, we're, we're now on Vercel, and that has just freed up a lot of, it's freed up resources and just given us a lot more confidence in our infrastructure. Allowed your developers to focus on. Exactly. Stop. Don't think about infrastructure. Yeah. You know, so I worry about that for them. They can focus on building their, their you know, these, these experiences. Yeah. What are, what are some of other um, ways that you kind of manage the transition? And I mean, is there, is there a way to manage a, a big migration like that without um, <laughs> hard Whatever your estimates are, double them. Okay. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, I think we did it in about six months when really we could have done with a year. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really setting expectations with your business. This is the non-technical stuff. So setting those expectations, maybe doing it a bit more in, in pieces. You know, we, we pretty much overhauled the entire storefront experience, mm. m not the checkout. Um, and it was an awful lot of work. And, you know, we have a ton of content pages with a ton of locales. And so it was a ton of work and a ton of testing. So we probably bit off more than we could chew. Mm. What were some of the metrics that you guys were looking at and kind of keeping track of while, during the migration to make sure everything was moving smoothly? I mean, smoothly? you know, so we use Google Analytics like a lot of companies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just wanted to track, you know, the users on the page where you know, we weren't losing anybody. Uh, we were tracking conversion rates um, and also, you know, site performance. Um, you know, site performance off the bat wasn't, you know, we're still learning, still tweaking. So it was better, but it wasn't. It wasn't any worse, but you know we've worked on that since. But it was really just making sure it was business as usual, mm -hmm. and we weren't losing anybody. So, and we, we proved that, and you know, um, in fact, we saw we saw an increase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess you know the performance optimizations. It is kind mm -hmm. of focusing on Next.js, tuning Next.js, yep. optimizing Next.js, and not necessarily having to think about a lot of like the infrastructure behind that to be able to do that. Yep. Um, what were some of the the kind of KPIs for your external stakeholders, your internal stakeholders, uh, like the content team you mentioned? Um, were they happy during the migration, and how did you kind of uh, no. manage that? No, they, I mean they were not. I mean, so, you know, it was they, they, again we lost some of that tooling that they had in Commerce Cloud, and uh, you know they had more things to learn. So we had you know again we're sanity. It was a learning curve there. I mean, it, we're still learning. We're still making that better. So um, we knew that we had the brand experience and the design that our company wanted to fit the product. But again, we had to keep everybody happy. So I think we've worked well over the past couple of years to get back to that position. And I say we've built some really neat internal tooling to make that experience better for, for our stakeholders. Um, what are some of the ways, obviously, like that, that's a big migration to Next.js. Mm -hmm. What are some of the ways that you guys that on your dev team have maintained code quality main, or set up your, you know, set up your code environments, yeah. things like that to so robust pipelines, right? So we use GitHub Actions. Um, you know, we've built out some really great pipelines. So, you know, we're linting. We're, you know, we've got a linter running to check uh, for things there. We are running our unit tests as part of our PR process. You know, we're doing peer reviews. Um, we're also doing then further down, once we merge in, we're doing integration tests, accessibility tests, uh, load tests, performance tests. So we're doing all manners of, of checkpoints along the way before we go to production. Do you feel like Next.js has kind of allowed your team to move faster, have more flexibility in how they're building? Uh, absolutely. I think one thing I think it's done for us is given us more confidence in what we can build. Um, I think the example we talked about before was, you know, just building some of those complex, like, animations. Mm -hmm. Like, we just couldn't have done that in Commerce Cloud. And, you know, I'm going to put a shout out for our team, but we built this, you know, beautiful blowout of the speaker. Check out the Sonos yeah, page. It look, it Sonos looks awesome. page. If you scroll down, it's like this. Yeah, I, I find myself just scrolling. It's like 75 <laughs> images. And as you scroll, you know, it shows a different part of the speaker, but it's a really beautiful experience. And, you know, before we just couldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. you know? 
So it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely given us more options. So you know, our brand, when we've got new products and things, they want new features, new things, and we, we know we can build it. So it feels, it feels good. Yeah, and you mentioned earlier, um, you know, productive developers are happy developers, Absolutely. and that's how you maintain yeah, kind yeah. of a lot of the, um, what are some other ways that you maintain you know, productivity and allow kind of, you remove a lot of the dependencies, a lot of the friction in the developer process at Sonos? Um, I, I like to think, you know, give them time to experiment, play with the features, have a voice. Mm. You know, um, with all the new features that are coming, quite often it's developers coming to us and saying, hey, let's try this. You know, this could be really good in our project. Um, you know, we do hack weeks every quarter where, you know, where the team plays with things. So I think it's just making them, you know, feel important and giving them, a, you know, a place to be heard and try new things out. Yeah. Do you feel like it's kind of changed the psychology of the team and, like, allowed you to problem solve in different ways? I think no, we're not, you know, being on a modern stack, I mean, it just feels good, right? You know, I feel like we could attract more developers to Sonos. Um, I, I mean, I speak for the developers, hopefully they're happy, but, <laughs> um, you know, I think it's a, it's a pretty good setup we have, and I think it's kind of like best in class industry standard, so it feels good. And you did mention, um, you know, part of why you migrated off of Salesforce Commerce Cloud was um, because of, you know, the recruiting, finding, onboarding yeah, yeah. new developers, uh, is that has that improved with, with Next.js? Absolutely. I mean, um, you know, we've had, uh, you know, I could speak outside of the web team. We've had an, another group in Sonos where they actually wanted to build a new, pro, a, new, a new tool, right? And they actually came to me and said, hey, we want on Vercel, <laughs> right? And that, that was the first I'd ever heard. But again, it's kind of become the, the industry standard best in class. Again, a team who has to build an app, they don't have to worry about that infrastructure. They can focus on building those customer experiences. Yeah, you mentioned uh, experimentation earlier. Mm -hmm. too. What are some of the ways that you guys are leveraging Next for experimentation or maybe, you know? Um... I mean, I think the entire name with Vercel, because, you know, that, that, again, that's a big part of why we're here. Um, it just means you can, you can spin up little apps in no time. You know, we've, bought, we've built little tools for in-house and you can just play with things, you know, build a playground out and try it out. And if it doesn't work, then you get rid of it. But it just gives you that freedom and, you know, it, you don't have to think about it again. You, you focus on the coding and not the infrastructure and where to host it. Mm -hmm. What are some of uh, your favorite features of Next.js to leverage as the, the team to, to experiment and, and build some of those? Some of the features, I mean, um, I think some of the, you know, this, we're really focused on, you know, some of the server side components now. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to, we want to really, we're currently on the pages router. We want to move to app router. Um, so we definitely want to focus on that. We, we've gone full turbo. So that, <laughs> that's been, that's been a hell of a journey. Um, you know, we've spent a lot of time breaking out packages and stuff like that. Um, upgrading Next, we're always doing that. So we're really just trying to stay with what Next is recommending is the best approach. You know, so we're on the latest version of Next. Of course, now we're out of date because 14 was announced. <laughs> so that'll be for next week. So um, Sonos developers watching. Yeah, 14's coming. Let's go. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, we're just trying to stay uh, up to date because we know one thing is Next keep bringing out new features like we saw today. And it just means if we're up to date and we're on the stack, we know we can avail of them. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've taken some pictures from today and I'm sharing those with the team. I said, let's, let's, let's try this <laughs> stuff time. out. Let's, let's play around with this stuff. Um, obviously, as an e-commerce company, mm -hmm. I feel like performance, uh, SEO, there's, yeah. there's things that kind of are crucial for websites. And, mm -hmm. and um, how do you leverage Next or how do you think Next kind of helps with those types of, of metrics for you? I think you know performance is a big part of you know my plan, well the, the the team's plan for next year. So we know with some of the new features we can start playing around and trying to improve performance. It's not our performance isn't where we want it to be, so we want to increase that. So you know that along with the speed insights. So you know we've seen in Vercel, we that's going to be a big focus point for this year. So again, server components, um, you know more caching is stuff we really want to focus on for next year. Can you talk us through kind of what your workflow is uh, at Sonos and kind of you know how do you guys are you guys leveraging like feature flags, I think you've mentioned before, and things like that. So we've started dabbling with feature flags. Yeah, that is something we also want to fo uh, focus on. So we definitely want to get more code to production quicker. Mm -hmm. So um, we've been in kind of branch management hell for the past <laughs> while. I think a lot of companies go through it. So really, we want to try and focus more on getting features to production, feature flags, A-B testing. Um, so that is something we're actively working on. Um, mm -hmm. We use Optimizely, so we're going to tie that in. I'm sure I can talk to a few people here about how that works. And um, yeah, that's something definitely on, on our roadmap. Cool. Um, what are some of like the, the ways in which you leverage um, Next.js and Vercel, kind of that relationship? Um, what has that meant for you guys at, at Sonos? I mean, you know, that's, I'll call it shout out to the Vercel team. They've been awesome to work with, right? I mean, we had an issue um, the other week where, you know, some of our pages were failing to build and we just couldn't figure it out. Well, you know, there's a lot of back and forth. Well, we just got on the phone and we solved it, right? So, you know, for us, like a lot of e-commerce companies, we're hitting a busy period. And uh, so now is the time we have to make sure things are stable. And we're stable now. It's been great. So it's, uh, it's a relationship that's worth every penny, you know? So shout out to the team. It's been awesome. 
speaking of, it is going to be a, a pretty intense time coming up. How are you feeling? What are you, what are you doing to prepare? I mean, kind of like last year, right? I mean, Black Friday, Cyber Monday is our biggest, uh, biggest time, you know, um, and last year, no issues. Right, so it was great. That's what I want. I don't have to worry about it. Um, we did have an issue, but it wasn't it wasn't our front end uh, next for sale problem. So I'm going in with the same mindset this year. I'm fully confident in, in the platform, um, and we've got you know we've got the team to support it. But I, I'm feeling really confident going into the holiday period. So everyone, put Sonos.com to the test. <laughs> put put yep. Versal to the test. Put your credit card uh, to the test. Visit yeah. Black Friday. Yeah, <laughs> so. Cool. So, I mean, what's next for the team? What are some of the fun things that you're excited for? Um, you know, the app router, really want to focus on that, really want to work on performance, um, just really want to, I mean, make it better, right? So we're, we're using the turbo repo I mentioned, and we've got multiple apps in there. We could do better. We're kind of deploying everything out at once. We want to we want to really fine tune it, and we've got dedicated resources now to work on maintaining and upgrading our next framework. So um, performance, um, so that's app router. Um, again, we want to go more server side. I'm trying to think of some of the other things. Um, I think that's the main ones for now. Can you share um, Sonos breakdown of like you know are you guys are your users mainly coming from like web or mobile or is it so we are we are very mobile focused right so of course I think a lot of developers probably focus working on Chrome right but we're actually our main user is from Safari um, really the, yeah Safari mobile um, so that you know so now we know we got a custom you know I think we got to focus on mobile. So mobile first idea. So um, I know with performance, we got to look at some of the elements on the page, see what works, and make it as fast as we can. Yeah, because probably server rendering too. And, kind of, and yeah. those scroll sequences are on mobile. Maybe they shouldn't be. They still look great. So um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna reassess a lot of things, make it as fast as we can. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Anything else you wanted to share and uh, say to the crowd? I would say big shout out to you know the, the web team at Sonos and our content team. You know, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be I wouldn't be sitting here today. Also, go to Sonos.com, buy a speaker, support <laughs> the company. Um, but yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Let's go.